welcome to the most excellent 80s movies podcast. It's the podcast where a filmmaker and a comedian run their way through the 80s movies we think we love or might have missed. This is The Running Man, a movie selection from 1987, about which Letterboxd says, 2019, a game nobody survives. This year might be the exception. By 2017, the global economy has collapsed and American society has become a totalitarian police state, censoring all cultural activity. The government pacifies the populace with broadcasting a number of game shows in which convicted criminals fight for their lives, including the gladiator style, The Running Man, hosted by the ruthless Damon Killian, where runners attempt to evade stalkers and certain death for a chance to be pardoned and set free. I'm Christy Lenz. I am an improviser, comedian, uh, one of the directors at the Neighborhood Comedy Theater in downtown Mesa, Arizona. And with me on this podcast, as always, is uh, Nathan Blackwell. I'm an independent filmmaker, also based in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And um, glad to be here. Hi, how's it going? Hi, hi, it's good. It's I'm yeah. glad that we made it through. 2017 and 2019 and didn't end up in this uh running man apocalypse yeah although you know it uh it's it's like when they said like the the financial you know market has collapsed and things are in ruin and it's 2017 it's like well they didn't get it too far off yeah we just didn't become a police state with the gladiator style tv shows right well entirely they're all love-based you're right, right. Close, close, but not close enough. Not quite close enough. Um, so is this a movie that you've seen a lot? <laughs> no. Um, uh, this is maybe the second or third time I've seen it. I think the first okay. time I saw it was only about like seven, eight years ago. Um, and I think I, saw, <laughs> I think I watched it for another podcast. I think um, it was for Comic Con, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was at the Phoenix Comic Con. We were doing a panel, and mm. so it, so it was at least for a panel. Maybe it was also an educating geeks um, podcast. Oh, I think um, so. Yes. So I, I haven't gone back and listened to <laughs> like what are my quips. Hopefully, uh, in the time that's passed, I've come up with brand new insights, or I, I, I'm not literally unconsciously repeating some of the same lame jokes but i guess we'll see so i guess we will someone will have to go back and find i should make my deep cut podcast. recommendation is the other podcast i recorded for the running man almost 10 years ago well i don't have one yet so we'll see what i come up with by the end okay great <laughs> Um, I, too, have not seen this movie a million times. This is maybe the third or fourth time I've seen it. I think uh, the first time I watched it was also for that same podcast recording <laughs> um, back who knows when for Educating Geeks. So uh, we start this movie with the scrolling text. It's uh, in like that video game font that's very pixelated, which immediately lets you know what you're in for. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't copy it all down exactly, but basically it's 2017, everything sucks, and the number one TV show in the world is The Running Man. Yeah. Great. Th this movie, this movie when, when it, especially in the first couple of scenes, felt very 90s to me. Mm -hmm. You know, there were a lot of, like, really low-budget, tacky, uh, like, uh, sci-fi 90s movies where it was out in broad daylight and people had weird gray outfits with wires mm -hmm. connected to them and everything was about like hacking the computers you know yeah um yeah hacking the satellite hacking the satellite yes um but this also fits in really well with movies like robocop which came out the same year with this whole sort of like uh, I think we're burnt out on a little burnt out on the whole like um you know like Reagan era economics mm -hmm. and so there were a lot of these like the dark side of of the capitalist system yeah um, coming out as well you know like the reaction of um you can't always trust what the state is telling you 
Yeah, and, and the, everyone just wants more views. They want more money. They want sensationalism on TV. And so there were a lot of movies, um, you know, kind of like um, not just RoboCop, which did it great, but also kind of like earlier movies like Rollerball as well, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> um, so the whole of this movie is sort of predicated on what comes next, which is a scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger is flying a helicopter and there's uh, he's a soldier and there's some sort of food riot that's breaking out uh, down below them. Mm-hmm. And the orders are to kill anything that moves. But he says, no, I won't do that. You can go to hell. We're going back to base. We're not going to kill these innocent men, women, and children who are just trying to get some food. And his men turn on him and attack him. Mm -hmm. And he ends up in jail. Yeah. And so it's good that we see that there are people who resist this kind of police state mentality that, that work in the police state. But it's also right. kind of like the last good thing this character does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like everyone else in there, everyone else in the helicopter is just rotten to the core and they're going to like really angrily like take him out because you won't kill these civilians and then they right. go ahead and kill all the civilians. Yeah. And, and then, but it is an outrage. So it's not something that like is expected they the 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 state still has to spin it they still have to pin it on a villain and so they're right now where they are in this world is that they're committing atrocities but they always have to find a scapegoat they always have to manipulate the message you know whether it's um deep fake technology or just creative editing um they still have to control the narrative And they do by editing the footage of the event to make it seem like Arnold Schwarzenegger was the main bad guy. Like Mm -hmm. they were like, no, don't kill them. And he was like, no, I'm going to kill them. Mm -hmm. I I never thought I would say this, but in some ways, Running Man is more timely now. It is. Uh, With the whole idea of of fake news and being able to min- manipulate not only what we see, but what we hear and how it's presented, you know? Wow. It's... And it's a good thing that the uh, actors are still on strike to make sure that their images can't get stolen from them and used uh, to make whatever they want in AI deep fake technology. Mm-hmm. So stay strong, sag We support you. We support you. You know, like I'm, I'm a, I'm definitely more in the Arnold camp than the Sylvester Stallone camp, but there's, there's some movies for the longest time where it's kind of a bottom of the barrel Schwarzenegger, you know? Yeah. Um, there's like the high Schwarzenegger is obviously like the Terminator and Predator and Kindergarten Cop, you know, yeah. but, but he, he's done also some of these lower ones. But they're still definitely enjoyable, but they, they, they do fall into kind of the cliche tropes of him smoking a cigar and blowing mm-hmm. someone up and having a really bad one-liner. A really um, bad pun. Yeah, and I would lump like Commando into that category, you know, um, but there is something special about this movie. So yeah, that's the reason I maybe agree. why I avoided it. But it it has become kind of a delight by (laughs) maybe some of the the maybe unintentional reasons, you know? Yeah. Um, It is pretty it's pretty good and pretty bad at the same time. You know, anytime a movie like this predicts the future and gets any part of it right, like Demolition Man, you know, kind of like, oh, wow. okay, good for you. Yeah, I I would say this is kind of like the, like this is kind of like Running Man and Demolition Man are kind of I feel like the people enjoy it for the exact same reasons. Yeah, which you know the campiness, the silliness, the costumes, 
and 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 just how it, it is it's just going for like a it's just going for a big three point free throw and boy i it doesn't quite make it <laughs> but uh. but you just got to salute it for what it does and and for what it is yeah well, and lots of people, uh, lots of innocent people get killed. Well, I suppose we're supposed to assume that the guards of this prison are not innocent. Right. Um, but a lot of the guards of this prison where Arnold Schwarzenegger end up get killed when he escapes. Yeah. The, there's a lot of video game uh, logic I- in this movie, which is mowing down people. And if as long as he is our hero, then he can do no wrong, even though he's pretty much an a-hole to everyone he meets. Everybody. He is, there's yeah. nothing likable or redeemable about him. And I think he's supposed to be like a lovable scamp. Yes. But it doesn't play that way. Certainly not on the page. <laughs> right. But we, we, but we, he is a little love. I wouldn't say lovable, but we, we can't help but want to continue to watch because it is Arnie. And we have a separation. We know that <laughs> it's not Arnold Schwarzenegger playing a character. It's, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, who apparently he is also called something else. You know, like, yeah, it's like he's not transforming himself into a character. He's transforming this character into him. And we're right. just kind of watching him with the one one liners and the kills and <laughs> and him being an a-hole to everyone else is just kind of a side effect to it. It's a weird take. Right. It is because like he's he seems like he's trying to almost be funny. Yeah, he, he is actively mean to his friends. And uh, even to the girl he ends up kidnapping. Yeah, they have a strange love language. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and their kiss at the end is totally unearned. Um, but you do kind of want them to be pals. Right. Well, her whole story is is pretty banana. So he escapes from a prison camp. Mm-hmm. Um, and he gets his uh, head exploding collar taken off so that's something we don't have yet is head exploding collars right right according like, to movies yeah. we should have them soon yeah i think the so it, it's like when the 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 explosion goes off it's a huge explosion which i feel is not super necessary like escape to new york like the the explosions in his neck were just enough to open up his arteries and that's really all you need yeah you know I guess you don't they were need a big kablooey. Yeah, you don't need it to be so such a big explosion that it maybe takes out everyone around you, but maybe they're kind of going for the shock and awe thing. Yeah. Uh so uh we also learned during this time that uh, Killian of the uh Running Man show and ICS is a real jerk. Yeah. But he he's also another great character act- actor uh richard dawson and he's mm-hmm. just like he honestly he's the mvp performance of the movie, of movie. yeah like he m- does such great mustache twirling he's a great villain i agree but he is a very very bad guy so we're intercutting yeah. him being like a guy who's mopping the floor accidentally mops onto his shoe and he's like, no, you're doing great work. You're a beautiful person. We appreciate all that you do here. If that guy's not out of the building by the end of the day, you're going to be mopping the floor, you know, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger breaks into an apartment building expecting to find his brother. Right. And I feel like electronic locks should probably get changed when it, they get a new like tenant. Like that agree. would be an, that would be an easy change, right? I also feel like he never ever worries about his brother again, right? <laughs> there is, yeah, yeah. The, the the brother was taken away for some reason, right? Um, and re-education, yeah. they say it never comes up again. You know, I bet they would have loved to have included a a brother. But there's no one else that looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um. So this woman is uh, wearing lingerie and doing uh, sit-ups like we all will do in the future. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger essentially like kidnaps her and uses her um, ID to say he's going to travel to Hawaii. Right. Meanwhile, at ICSS, they uh, they want Ben Richards. They want Arnold Schwarzenegger's character to appear on The Running Man. Yeah. Look at that gorgeous man. I could get up in the ratings four points just for his biceps. Which, meanwhile, they're the number one show in the whole entire world. Right. And It's, uh, it's the opium of the masses, is this... this um, Deadly American Ninja slash Survivor show. Right. Um, but he's upset that they're not gaining more uh, ratings. And it's like, well, how many more ratings are you going to gain? You're already the number one. Right. What? But it's he, not like you have a competition. Right. But he senses stagnation. And so they so they need something more. Uh, one of my favorite lines is, give me the Justice Department, Entertainment Division. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so they they need a big wow. They need something, you know, it's just these 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 normal dudes getting mow- mowed down by these violent iron chefs. Yeah. Um, and the thing I'm surprised is, like, there's not enough, like, so when Arnold, to skip ahead, eventually kills one of the dudes. Mm -hmm. There's some dialogue, like everyone is appalled. It's understandable. I mean, that he was probably some of their favorites. Who was the first guy killed? Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero, right. But there was some dialogue saying that, well, a stalker had to be killed one of these days. Right. You know, it's a contact sport. But so I have, so how do people win without, killing one of these stalkers and how how does one how has have one of these stalkers never been killed before you know do they just defeat them do they tie them up with ropes is, <laughs> is there like we're not given enough like geography of like how the game is normal like because they were quote unquote winners before there like, were three, three winners three winners and we see footage allegedly of them enjoying their time in Hawaii Mm-hmm. Um, but in reality, they're uh, burnt to a crisp inside a locker room right. somewhere in this uh, somewhere in this zone where right. the game takes place. So you get the idea that it's like uh, almost like a Hunger Games arena, right? But different it, different stages, different areas. But so, how did these supposedly like? How did the f- you know, so if they didn't actually escape, but, you know, the audience saw footage of them escape, like, how do they, are they sneaking past these guys? Are they outwitting them? Are they, you know... Is there an end? There's, like, a goal line you have to cross. If you survive for the three hours, then you win? Right. We're not given, we're not given just a, we need just a a, a morsel of, like, what is, like... The end, you know, is it like a an arena, like where we eventually see Jesse Ventura in, you know? But it it's like, yeah. So I wish there was a little more information on how you actually win the game. Maybe it, there there is, and we just we're looking at something else. But it's in the book. It's in the Stephen King book. <laughs> it's in the novella. We just haven't read it. Um. Yeah, because there are details that don't quite add up because they they do say at some point that the arena is like an earthquake zone, but they also have like a whole hockey setup that they have for Sub-Zero where it's like they chase him in there into the hockey arena first. Mm -hmm. So that must mean it's closest to the door. So then why isn't Sub-Zero always the first gladiator? Because he gets chosen by a cute little old lady. Right. So if they had chosen Buzzsaw first, they would have just ended up in this hockey arena with a chainsaw guy, and it wouldn't have made sense. I'm guessing there's not a ton that is um, that similar to the original source material. Um, Right. (laughs) Well, because I was wondering, too, like, so what do they do? Like, if Sub-Zero had killed Ben Richards, like, right at the very beginning, and there's still two and a half hours of showtime left... 
What do they do with all that time? Yeah. It's got to be pretty boring if the guy always gets killed in the first half hour. Maybe that's what Killian's upset about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so they definitely, like, before they put him into the arena, jack him full of trackers. Yes. Because uh, the woman gets him busted by punching him in the junk and being like, I don't know you. That's my purse. Which is understandable. Yeah, it's totally understandable. Uh, but then she immediately like recognizes that they're making up lies about him because they're like, he killed all these people while he was escaping from. And she's like, that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. And she's immediately persuaded to go do evil uh, by going to do good. She yeah. breaks into uh, the. Um, yeah. So so when station. when she sees the footage. Of. Uh, ben of Arnold having been captured, they've added in that he also massacred people. And she was like, that didn't happen. And so it, it becomes the splinter in her mind. And so um, she goes to, inv- so she goes to investigate what really happened with the whole like butcher of Bakersfield event and finds the original footage. And so she's behind the scenes. She, you know, Amber starts to get curious about the police state and what is being told to her. She steals the original footage of the Bakersfield massacre. And even though they send her into the running man game, they let her keep it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. How does she, so she ends up giving it to the resistance, but that's inside the running man games. Right. And so she and they did, didn't take she, it away from her when they uh, changed her into her jumpsuit and everything. So she did she hide it in her hair? Apparently. Did she swallow it? She put it in her prison wallet. Okay. Um uh so but before we even get into the game, we meet the gladiators as they're showing up for the game. But do we get the sense that this this happen this show happens every night? Um, that's a good question. That's a lot of shows. It's a lot of shows. It is, and it's a lot of uh, dancers dancing, uh, and a lot of like fans showing up to greet (laughs) Buzzsaw. Can we give it up for the Running Man dancers? They just they do so much dancing. There is a lot of um, uh, not latex, but what spandex outfits Mm -hmm. in this movie, Mm -hmm. and it is not super flattering to most of the people in this but i still appreciate it um but yeah so the dancers which i love um for many reasons but specifically for when they're doing like a a funeral segment for one of the um the stalkers that's been killed and you've got the dancers in funeral attire spinning around <laughs> The uh, the uh, the 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 people in I guess their their funeral dance. Yeah, that's wonderful. their mourning. The, the dance of mourning. The dance of mourning, which which I I salute. I salute too. But the movie also shows us like the entirety of these dances. Like we get to see a lot of footage of the dances. It's not just like dance, dance, dance. Next thing, it's like. Dance, dance, dance. Seven minutes of a dance. Seven minutes of a whole dance. We did all this choreography and you have to watch it. Well, they got to pad out these episodes. I mean, they can't just show the people running everywhere. You know, that's a lot of running. So after he kills uh, Sub-Zero, Sub-Zero, now Plane Zero. What? Sub Zero is less than zero. Yeah. So when he kills Sub Zero, so the, I I feel like there's a tier list of one liners. And when did yeah. Arn? I guess Arn Arnie's one liners came pretty early, like Commando. Yeah. Um, uh, he, but yeah, he does say I'll be back in this movie. Yes, which I apparent apparently he's done like eleven times. Um, <laughs> in different movies. So dumb. So dumb. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think um, Sub Zero, more like Plane Zero. That's an upgrade. He's just yeah. upgraded him. Um, <laughs> because in math, less than zero is less than zero. Yep. <laughs> so what? So so let's do a rewrite. Um, okay. What? So what's what's a better Sub Zero pun? Sub Zero, more like. Snub zero. Hmm. Let's see. Sub zero. Ooh, dang it. I've backed more myself like, into a corner. More like sub hero because he's not the hero. He's less than a hero because he didn't win. Maybe they did pick the best one. I won't Maybe lie. they did. They were I'm, chopped it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I'm struggling. Ugh. <laughs> and now it's immortalized in a podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I would say of all his different movies, the, these puns, they're both extremely enjoyable by how wincy they are. Yeah. Yeah. He, they, when he, and he's escaping from the prison, he throws someone over the balcony and goes, need a lift? <laughs> so bad. So did these puns start with James Bond? I don't know. I just thought there's something I always associate with uh, action movies. Mm hmm. Because the first time I really remember these are from the J the first couple of James Bond movies from the 60s. And I have never seen those movies. Oh, my gosh. That's a different podcast, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry. But yeah, like the Sean Connery. Obviously, Sean Connery started it. As James obviously, Bond. Obviously. Obviously. But then it really kind of gets into high gear um, once we're into Roger Moore territory and then it becomes like grown. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, can, it becomes grown city. But then, so I, I imagine at this point it becomes a staple. But yeah. Anyways, that's my take. So after Sub Zero dies, they have to send two stalkers in at the same time. So they send Buzzsaw and Dynamo. Buzzsaw yes. just has chainsaws, which right. is not a Buzzsaw. <laughs> uh huh. And Dynamo sings and electrocutes people. Yes. So he he full on gets to electrocute people with this advanced technology, and there's even like stun settings as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, Dynamo is both cool and gross at the same time, especially yeah, when we see him at the end. So they, they, uh, meanwhile, uh, the, uh, two accomplices that have been sent in with Ben Richards and the girl find the uplink satellites. Right. Cause they're inside the game. Yes. The, the, Why the wouldn't they be? Why wouldn't they be? And she 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 has the uh, the video because why wouldn't she have? Um, and they're able to use that once the re and the resistance is already there, right? They're like the, the resistance, resistance just is, is they're inside the Running Man game. Yeah, that's where their headquarters are. There's cameras everywhere. That's got to be rough on them. Yeah, they've got to get in and out. Challenge. There must be like some sewer entrance or something like that. Well, they could be saving people and they're not. But Buzzsaw gets uh, knocked out uh, and then eventually he gets uh, sliced through the crotch. Mm -hmm. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger says Buzz Buzzsaw had to split. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh-huh. Uh, so Killian appears in the game and offers him a three-year contract to become a stalker to stop uh stop running yeah and become a stalker for a three-year contract because this is an all-time this is like a, a huge huge event like not only has apparently no stalker been killed or maybe they have and they've just spun it you know mm -hmm. but it is right on there on the air and at this point he's basically defeated dynamo but then killed two other stalkers yep yeah it is becoming a well, travesty at this point 
Yeah, because he doesn't kill Dynamo. He's like, I'm not going to kill an unarmed man. Yeah. I let you go. I stand for something. Um. Uh, also, behind Killian in that scene is a sign for one of their other popular shows, The Hate Boat. <laughs> That's pretty good. What, climbing for Dollars is another one. Climbing for Dollars, yep, where you mm-hmm. just climb a rope while dogs try and bite you from below. Mm-hmm. Yep. These are all really great pitches. Yeah, great parodies. Mm-hmm. Um, so they send in Firebolt, who has a jet pack. Yeah, played by the great Jim Brown. Who's a football man. Yes, and, and an actor. Uh, he catches up to them. Everybody catches up to everybody really easily. Uh, and she finds the winners who have been all burned up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of, of all the stalkers, the only ones I felt like had any, like, gravitas was Jim Jim Brown. And as then Firebolt. Yeah, as Firebolt. As just like a, he just is lethal. Like he is all business. Um, so he was the scariest. And then Jesse Ventura is great because he's kind of become, you know, um, a, a an t- announcer. Yeah, he's become a TV personality. And, and they kind of make him a little, I wouldn't say feminine. But he's he he's put in kind of like blue and pink colors and he's given kind of like, you know, this um, uh, this his hair is very kind of announcer friendly yoga mm-hmm. instructor, you know, mm-hmm. all right, let's go get more push ups, you know, like he is yeah. he's an interesting character. The other c- people kind of denigrate him because of this. And he's got a fitness show that the woman was watching in her apartment. Right. Get get fit with Captain Freedom. Yeah. Um, I liked him as that character. So they're like, we're I bringing him out of retirement. He's actually playing a character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's interesting. And he's he's kind of played like he's got a chip on his shoulder and he needs something to prove. And it <laughs> He has, I feel like he has the, the, maybe Amber has the biggest arc, but I think Captain Freedom has the second biggest arc in this movie. You think so? He's got the most. <laughs> There's not a lot of competition. Not really. Yeah. yeah. He's I don't got know. Something... Sub-Zero becomes plain zero. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Mathematically, that is a pretty huge transformation. It is. Um, so he doesn't want it, but he, he, so he, and he doesn't want to, so Captain Freedom doesn't want to use all these gimmicks when he goes into the arena. He doesn't want to be covered in metal. He just wants to go fight hand to hand gladiator style. Right. One man versus another man. And so what they do is they, uh, put together a fake arena. Yeah. They, they They need a way out at this, at some point. The game can't continue and they need a way out of this. You know, they need to take over the messaging and the threat's not over, but they need to wrap up the show and for the audience to be given a story. So they deep fake the murder of two stunt doubles. One stunt double, just the one. Two. There's a woman, too. Oh, that's right. Oh, oof. Yeah, that was rough. And and Captain Freedom doesn't seem to have a problem killing these two innocent people. <laughs> no. So they kill them and make it look like it's Ben Richards and Amber. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, they get found by the rebels who are just chilling inside the game. Yes. They, so they've got their headquarters. Um, and they they are very suspicious of Arnold and Amber. But they've proved their worth. Yep, because she's got the original footage of the Bakersfield Massacre. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to air it. So they break into the airwaves. But they did a pretty pretty good job of editing together what they en- end up transmitting. So it, they've on, on the Rebels side, they've got to have someone, like an editor, who's great at fast turnarounds. Yeah, he's their most valuable uh, Rebel. Yeah, their freelance editor. Yeah. The AV guys are uh, the most valuable to the resistance. 
<laughs> yeah. So there you go. There's a future for you in the post-apocalypse, Nathan. All right. Yeah, you're going to survive. I'll be writing better puns and you'll be editing video. Well, you you always wonder when you watch these things of like post-apocalyptic or pre-post-apocalyptic scenarios like what what would be my valuable skill set? And I and I had never come up with a good cuz I you know, I'm a filmmaker. I don't really I'm not really good at anything else. But now that I realize editing is a path for me, that might be what I I kind of put forward. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, it's it's got to be one of these dystopian um, worlds. It can't be the po- apocalypse because at that point, who cares? There's no technology. There's yeah, no power. Yeah, it has to be a police state where they're running Yeah, so away. it's got to be kind of a quasi John Carpenter police state sci-fi, you know, uh, state. Um, okay, good to know. Well, at least you know what to hope for. Yeah. And keep uh, keep your editing skills skills, skills sharp. In yeah. case you end up yeah. in the in the resistance. Okay, great. So it it does seem like we're <laughs> being very critical of this movie and yeah. really kind of being negative on it, but there's a lot of enjoyment also. I feel like all these negatives are actually like enjoyment points. No, I agree. Uh, it's it's a fun watch. It's a, a silly movie. Yeah. It doesn't hold up under any kind of scrutiny, <laughs> logically. No. Like, this would be the worst script in the world to read. <laughs> I agree. It's probably pretty short. Yeah. Because uh, it wraps up super quickly after this. They, they break into the studio. They Mm -hmm. uh, send Killian down the chute. They sort of get him to admit that he's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. They send him down the chute and he crashes into the wall and explodes. And by now the the crowd is on their side. Yeah. The crowd is really fickle. I have to say. Oh, they sure are. That's one of the negatives of some of these movies to where the crowd has the power is that the crowd can just turn on a dime. And I don't feel like that's accurate. You know, it's like, I can totally understand, like, at this point, they love the show and they love their, um, their Iron Chefs Mm -hmm. and they're devastated when they die, just like in the actual show Iron Chef. Um, but I feel like it doesn't matter, like, what someone else, like, I feel like their loyalties are not easily given up on, you know, like they're sold the narrative of this show. And so even, I mean, I can understand them maybe losing faith in, in, you know, like when they see the footage of, of, of Arnold having not been the massacre and then starting to doubt, but I just can't imagine that they would flip on, on their show so quickly or easily. Well, there's that one scene with the old woman where they're like, who do you think is going to make the next kill? And Mm -hmm. she has to predict it. And she predicts Ben Richards. And they're like, no, you have to pick a stalker. And she's like, no, I don't. I can pick anyone I want. And I pick Ben Richards because he's a mean motherfucker. Yeah. And I buy that. But it's like any time you have one of these movies to where like the, the whole audience is completely reversed by one speech. You know, mm-hmm. and then they turn to applause like ugh, that's just that just burns my eyes. Yeah. Well, and it's like in the Hunger Games, you at least get the sense that nobody likes the Hunger Games. Right. That most people already didn't like the Hunger Games mm-hmm. and thought it was a bunch of baloney. Glad they still have baloney. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for the baloney. So on a scale of one zero to ten zeros. Mm-hmm. Going above? No, that's dumb. On a scale <laughs> of one uplink satellite to ten uplink satellites, or maybe these are how many dancers of shame? Yes, on a scale of one dancer to ten dancers. Right. How many Running Man dancers do you give 1987s? The Running Man. It's tough because I, 
I definitely like more dancers is better. Right. But too many dancers is just too much. I agree. So, yeah, this is a tough one. This is a tough one because objectively, it's it's not a great movie, but in reality, it does give a lot of joy. It does. It's a fun watch. It's an easy watch. Mm-hmm. It goes down smooth. Right. If you're, yeah, if you're into spandex, this is your movie, you know? Okay, this is it. it <laughs> Amer- just like American Gladiators is your show, this is your movie. Um, I am going to probably give it a seven. Okay. Which is more than I, more than should be advised. I think, okay. I think the first time you watch it, you're not going to give it a seven. This is one of those movies that it's only on your second or third viewing that you can really up- enjoy the camp. Yeah. It. So I would say the first time you see it, ah, 5.5, the second time, like a 6.5. And then the, you know, it's kind of like how you like really enjoy like a weird flavored potato chip. Like a weird flavored potato chip. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, picante lime or, you know, or like <laughs> fusion blast shrimp or something like that. It's like, okay. now I, I kind of crave it, you know. <laughs> so you have to get addicted first. So I don't feel like you're going to you're going to reach a seven until maybe the second or third time. But that's that's okay. my observation. I give it a six point five. Right. Because it didn't pass the rocket test. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I tried to get Rocket to watch it with me, and he bailed by halfway through. Right. Because it was his first time. Yeah. So he was not yet addicted to the picante lime potato chip. No. He was like, Mom, this movie is stupid. I'm going to go play games in my room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... This is and this is the first movie in a in a little while on our run that didn't pass the rocket test. <laughs> well, it had to happen, and uh, I I think uh, the Running Man is not a huge surprise. I no, feel like not a huge yeah, I feel like also it's one of those kind of movies that you can appreciate more as you're older. <laughs> yeah, I thought he would like all the uh, campy, uh, you know, hilarious cartoon violence. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it, the no, goofiness. It did not capture the goofiness and the, you know, swords. He loves swords and like the guy with the saw and the guy with the electrician electrocution mm-hmm. uh, hat. Um, but nope, he was not sucked in by any of that. Mm-hmm. So, what is your deep cut res- recommendation? And is it Iron Chef? No. So I so I'm going to. This is not a huge deep cut, but this is if. For those who have not seen Running Man and you enjoy Running Man, then I'm assuming that you probably haven't seen Death Race 2000. I so, haven't. So Death Race 2000, so this is 1975, is kind of in the same wheelhouse, but it's okay. driving instead. So it's it's... It's the show that everyone watches. It's so this is David Carradine. So this is a Roger Corman movie. Um, even like Sylvester Stallone is in Death Race 2000. Baby Sylvester oh, wow. Stallone plays like a, a really broad Italian stereotype. Um, fair warning, there is nudity in this oh. in Death Race 2000. Um, so it's maybe not a rocket movie yet. Okay. Okay. I I wouldn't say it's like, I mean, it's so like, you know, like Roger Corman, he does like these really broad exploitation movies, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so some nudity and, and bloodshed is required. Right. You know, um, you gotta get some butts in there. So, yeah. So it, this is in that category. So there's going to be, um, some boobs. There's going to be some buns, and and that's about it. And 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 some uh, probably a lot of double entendres. Um, okay. But yeah, Death Race two thousand 
and this make a good double feature because okay. they're they're both pretty loony. They both deal with the rebels defying the police state, which is kind of giving them a show for again that's being like the opium of the masses. They're very much related. So okay, yeah, and and then the, and then it's also great to watch like these insane cars that they had to create with a very low budget. Um, and so that's fun. I love it. That's a great. So that goes hand in hand with my deep cut recommendation, which I uh, recently, um, there's not that many good movies coming out right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's because of the strike or uh, if, it, if it's too. They, the, yeah, too they had, for the- well, they, they have pushed some stuff off, but I don't, I feel like, we haven't quite felt the effect of that yet. Like, like there was some stuff for the, the, the winter season, November, December, that I think is getting pushed off. But um, yeah, it, it does get kind of, we're in this weird period where um, the uh, summer movies, the summers have summer has finished and, and there's going to be some Halloween movies, but then in November, they're doing a lot of the Oscar movies. Okay, so I think this movie would probably fall into the category of like a late summer movie, but the Expendable mm-hmm. Four was about to come out, Expend yeah. Four Bowls, <laughs> and I was like, I want to go see the Expend Four Bowls because there's nothing really else out. Mm-hmm. So I want to go see it, but I need to see the other ones first so that I don't miss out on any important one through three plot points. No doubt. So I watched The Expendables 1, 2, and 3. Mm-hmm. And I went to see The Expend for Bowls. Oh, my gosh. So that's my deep cut recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> is to do is to watch four movies. Is to watch four movies. Um, they're not good, but they're pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and they just double down on all the tropes and uh, and silliness of all the original uh, of like uh, you know the action movie world. Right. It's just like a hundred percent playing to the genre, and I thought it was pretty enjoyable. You know what? I think for our bonus content, we should. You should. You should. We should talk more about the Expendables, about the four movies, because okay. I st- I tapped out at some point, probably at at two. So I want you to explain to me the uh, the enjoyable merits of the remaining Expendable movies. OK, can do. Um, well, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, sticking around here to the end for us. If you want to learn more about where Nathan and Chrissy can be found in the real world, Go to truestory.fm and go to our most excellent 80s movies podcast page. Uh, You'll find links there to all of our various uh, projects and things to do. Uh, You can find us on our social media and all of that. Uh, Nathan, where is where are people going to find the best place to support you and your filmmaking endeavors? Yeah, so I would say uh, squishystudios.com, which has uh, our short films, but also has links to the, our feature film, The Last Movie Ever Made. Um, right now, The Last Movie Ever Made, or lastmovieevermade.com, just forwards to Squishy Studios. Eventually, we'll have a page that's just dedicated to it once the movie's been released wide for, like, you know, renting and 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 downloading and things like that. But, um, but yeah, uh, squishy studios is, is the best source. Excellent. Uh, and you can find me at the neighborhood comedy theater in downtown Mesa, Arizona at nctphoenix.com. Uh, you can also find my other podcasts on true story FM. You can find gank that drank a supernatural drinking game podcast, as well as the cool time dice hour, a real time actual play, uh, RPG comedy podcast. Um, uh, so thank you so much for listening. And while you're out there in the world, please keep the most excellent 80s movies motto in mind. Be excellent to each other and party party on, on, dudes. dudes.